Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how to build your Q4C Rev4, which has the KL hot swaps. So here we go. Uh, we're also going to be adding an encoder to that, uh, and then installing some Boba E4T switches into there. Uh, one thing to note before starting this build is uh, if you've got one of the more recent plate kits for the Q4C, there's two plates in here for the right half. There's the original one for the Rev2 and 3 that has kind of a more Swiss cheesy layout here. Whereas this is a frequency Rev4 specific plate, which has a blocker here, basically, since there's gonna be, once you install the two 1.25U keycaps here and then the three 1U keycaps here, you're gonna see a small gap here. So in the plate, all the plate kits uh, now that I sell, I've included this plate in here that'll hide uh, the PCB from being shown. Um, you can use this plate if you want to, uh, but just do note that you'll see the PCB uh, at that junction right there. All right, moving on. So first thing to do is test your PCB. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, mainly just plug it in, see if the lights show up and everything. Um, and you can take a pair of tweezers and start testing the backs out of these hot swap sockets to make sure everything's okay. Um, and I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, just to make sure everything's all right. And if you do have an issue with the PCB, just let me know and I will send you out a replacement or let you know if it's uh, possible for me to fix remotely. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is install the stabilizer. So I've got these two stabilizers here. They're already clipped and lubed. So for here, all the stabilizers, the wire is gonna be in the bottom except for the bottom row where the wire is going to be on the top side of the switch. Okay, got our stabilizers in there. So the next thing we wanna do is install the rotary encoder. So unfortunately this is the only part that will require soldering. Um, I mean, it's optional. If you wanna just stick a switch there, that's fine. But we will add the rotary encoder in there. All right, let's so install it in there, make sure it's flush. Do the opposite corners of the rotary encoder. Make sure they are the, the bottom of the encoder is level with the PCB. And then afterwards I'll do the rest of the pins. Okay, so that's the only bit of soldering that we have to do here. Okay. Now we'll fit the switch plate over the PCB. And then I'll install a couple switches in here. So I'll uh, we'll check, first of all, it's really important to make sure that your switch pins are straight uh, so you don't damage the socket. Because if, if your switch pins are a little bit bent, it'll, it can damage the socket, it can push the socket out and damage the PCB as well. And that is not an easy fix. So definitely check your switches before you insert them in. So typically I will do a couple switches in the corners. Yeah, so here the switch pin is bent. You can just either fix it with your hand or um, take a pair of tweezers and uh, realign it to make sure when you're inserting the switches in, they're straight and then they'll click in. So there we go. Got the first five in. Everything looks pretty decent so far and I'll just install the rest of the switches in there. So yeah, just want to reiterate, just make sure that 
all your switch pins are straight as you're inserting the switches in. Now in terms of what switches are compatible with this board here, I've got these Boba U4Ts, um, but you can also use, use Kale switches, uh, Gadron switches, pretty much any NMX, MX compatible switch will work with these hot swap sockets. All right, so all the switches installed, the rotary encoders installed. Last thing we need to do is assemble the case. So first I'll insert all the screws and standoffs into the top plate here. Now sometimes in the documentation I've I refer to this plate where all the switches fit into as either the switch plate or the top plate. And I, I use that term interchangeably sometimes. Okay, so that's done for the top half here. So now we want to get this bottom plate on. Now, the one thing we need to do is because we have this rotary encoder here and you know, if we push down on this rotary encoder, it's gonna shift this PCB away from the switch plate uh, and basically dislodging the switches from the PCB. So what we want to do is add a small piece of foam here in between the PCB here, the bottom of the PCB and the bottom plate here. So such that when we press down on this encoder, uh, the switches will still stay in the PCB. So I'll just show you this small piece of packing foam or you know any kind of foam will work, just as long as it's non-conductive. And this piece of foam is probably about three, four millimeters thick. So that's all you need. Uh, if it's too thick, then you won't be able to close the bottom plate onto here. So make sure that is sitting underneath the encoder there, and then sandwich it in with the bottom plate. And then start screwing on the bottom plate. So once you get on there, get that on there, go ahead and do the rest of the screws of the bottom plate. And in terms of the order of adding these screws on, I tend to just do the corners first, kind of make sure everything's aligned, and then I'll fill in the rest of the board. have it. That's how you build a Q4C Rev4.